What's up there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Tuesday evening, March 16, 2021. It's a date, 9.34 p.m. West Coast time with the latest earthquake on the globe, a 4.0. Out here in, uh, looks like around the Texas area. We'll go ahead and check out the specific dynamics of that uh, earthquake right now. In an area where we've seen, well, quite a bit of earthquake activity over the months there. It seems to take place around this area I believe it's Pecos, just northwest of that region. This 4.0 struck at uh, 6.8 kilometers below the surface. And um, you can see some of the prior earthquake activity over the last 24 hours there. They had a couple three-pointers within the region. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the last seven days of uh, 2.5 and above and check out the uh, activity that's kind of progressing a little bit, uh, migrating around this region of the uh, Rustler, Rustler Hills area. And it uh, looks like uh, a lot of canyons out there in this area of Texas. Uh, of course, you got New Mexico uh, right uh, to the north there. But this activity occurring right there in Texas. I want to check out some of the satellite views, see what's out there. Kind of looks like we're zooming in on Mars or something. Uh, <laughs> pretty crazy. <clears throat> 4.5. These guys have it set... 57 kilometers south of White City, New Mexico, where this 4.5 struck here. There's a, well, there's, I'm not for sure what that is. Looks like potentially some type of lake or, or a, maybe a, a, yeah, it looks like a lake for the most part. Can't really tell on this uh, um, internet browser Google map page. I'd have to go into uh, the Google Maps or Google Earth specifically to get some clearer shots. But uh, definitely some movement out there in the uh, Texas area. Looks like maybe potentially a lot of fracking operations up here. You can see the ponds of the um, drilling operations all throughout the land there. That's quite a few of them just within that road. The earthquake sit down here by a couple thousand feet. Um, you know, could potentially be related, uh, especially with... Uh, it, with all these fracking operations all over the place, you can see them everywhere. Those are not farmhouses or, or backyard pools. Um, these are all fracking pump operations that look very similar from the air. Uh, so they're definitely scattered about in and around the area of earthquake activity that we're seeing there in Texas. Um, yeah, kind of interesting there. But it's a rather large, somewhat of a larger earthquake there, 4.5. It's pretty... Uh, uh, a larger one than what we've seen, obviously, over the past week or so, um, compared to, you know, like I said, 4.5, it's uh, the larger one. 2.7s, quite a few 2.7s here over the last week. And the depth of these earthquakes, roughly around 7 kilometers or so. I'll check out, uh, looks like a few folks reported filling this earthquake out there um, in uh, around the Carlsbad, Carlsbad, New Mexico area, and also in the parts of Texas. Did you fill out responses there uh, indicating some of that uh, population out there indicating or uh, reporting that uh, earthquake being felt as light shaking? As uh, far as regional information goes on specifics of earthquakes in this vicinity, uh, looks like not a whole lot. You know, as far as like past historical earthquake activity, of course, um, this is only going to show 4.5 to 5.0 uh, for the smaller one. So it looks like there has been some in the past for that magnitude. Definitely a lot more under that magnitude. But uh, from 1900 to 2015, it looks as though there's only been a couple within this region here. Um, hold on one second here. I got so many windows open here. I don't know what I'm doing. Guadalupe Peak. Sacramento Mountains. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so just just uh, definitely kind of a larger quake compared to what we've seen, folks, in the past. So kind of keep an eye on that. But I believe this still just kind of shows the uh, uh, enormous amount of pressure out here in the central area uh, a couple days ago. Yesterday, when was it? A couple days ago, we seen uh, some earthquakes out there in the Wichita, Kansas area. I believe uh, was <clears throat> right around that specific fault area 
um, in this region. Not going to go into that a uh, whole lot uh, right now, but earthquake activity over the last 24 hours within this region of Kansas uh, has calmed down tremendously compared to what they had been seeing um, over the last week or so. And that can show up pretty strongly on that map there where they had 3.9, 3.5 there shaking up the Eastboro area uh, of the Wichita region. Luckily, things look to be calming down for now um, along that area of the North American plate. As far as the West Coast goes, folks, uh, pretty active out here along the western part of uh, California, in and around the San Andreas Fault, the creeping section there, showing uh, quite a few uh, microquakes and whatnot. Ridgecrest kind of scattered and uh, minor in detail, or as far as magnitude goes, not a whole lot happening there in Ridgecrest area where the hand is. Um, and, of course, down here in the spiderweb complex faults here of Los Angeles and Southern California on the Pacific side of the plate, or plate boundary, um, just some sporadic uh, microquakes as well. A little bit of swarming down here to report in the Salton Sea area, north shore, or the uh, South Shore area. Kind of watching that for potential further movement. Uh, right now it looks like just a handful of quakes there in the region. Of course, if this ramps up to... Oh, I don't know, 50, 100 quakes a day, then we're looking at potentially watching for an earthquake um, <clears throat> or potentially looking at earthquake watch here for Southern Cal. Uh, but just kind of uptick right now, um, but no major swarming to report there. Uh, same for Nevada, just a little uh, earthquake activity along that fracture where that six-pointer struck last year. And around Mammoth Lakes region, outside of the Long Valley Super Volcano Caldera, uh, some sporadic earthquakes and uh, microquakes in the vicinity of Mammoth Lakes. <clears throat> uh, some microquakes up here around Redding and also along the Cascadia Mega Thrust, where a 2.5 struck right at the southern end of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Um, there is some definite earthquake activity pickup uptick in the Idaho region. Um, as far as microquakes go, no major quakes to report. A moderate 3. Point, or at least a light 3.6 struck near Chalice, Idaho, uh, depth of the earthquake a little deep, 20 kilometers there, and an aftershock following that 2.5, uh, very sim similar depth there of 19 kilometers. Yellowstone National Park is back when it comes to the seismograph station. Let me show you that real quick here on the overviews. Uh, and there's definitely still, well, the activity that you see on this map here is from that 6.6 .6, uh, earthquake that struck off the coast, the coast of Russia earlier today. They showed up significantly on the majority of the seismograph stations throughout the park there. Uh, but as far as earthquake swarming goes, at least now that they got it updated, 315, 316, uh, up to today's date, only a couple small microquakes being reported in the vicinity. That, of course, the earthquake that struck off the Russia coast. Um, further earthquake activity up in Alaska. Uh, no major um, activity to report up there. Just some a little increase in earthquake activity in the microquake department. Of course, there's where that 6.6 .6 struck uh, right there in the uh, inland area of the Pacific Plate, the Pacific Ring of Fire, kind of right there at that corner. 6.6 .6 striking at 22 kilometers, been a handful of aftershocks, highest been a 5.4, uh, with a little migration inland and to the north there, uh, with some very various depths of uh, activity. So kind of kind of watching that. Um, down south here where that eight pointer struck here a week or so ago now kind of dwindling down when it comes to aftershock activity the largest one of 5.0 within the vicinity of the kermadec islands and um, continued increase throughout the indonesia area with uh, quite a few fours popping off there throughout that region uh, south america looking pretty quiet uh, almost six pointer 5.7 which west chile rise uh, striking earlier, that's uh, well off the coast of Chile, uh, 10 kilometers below surface in this little fracture area. Uh, well, the, that fracture is down south there, Chile Rise area. Of course, this little complex fracture of zigzags. I uh, see some pretty good sized earthquakes on that as well. But for now, uh, no major movement to report in the South America area. <clears throat> uh, far as trimmer department goes here, folks. Um, the latest trimmer shows a lot of movement in Northern California, and it's mostly confined in Northern California. 218 epicenters being recorded at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, 
pretty good potential as to why we're seeing a little bit of earthquake movement at the surface there off the coast of Eureka with that 2.5 uh, that struck there earlier today. Uh, but other than that, the majority of the slippage along the Cascadia is pretty quiet. Um, Hawaii, real quick, we do have to cover Hawaii, right? That's uh, kind of a topic, and it's been a topic, and it will be a topic for uh, uh, in the near future. A little bit of further movement off the shore of the Big Island 3.0, striking at 8.6 kilometers. Uh, somewhat of a shallow quake there. Um, continued earthquake movement along the southeast flank there of Hawaii. But Mauna Loa picking up in earthquake activity, definitely, uh, with uh, quite, a few hand, uh, quite a few earthquakes around the crater area and very shallow. Uh, these are near surface readings with the negative right there, uh, right at the crater. Uh, obvious increase in, uh, in uh, the further potential of, of eruption here coming pretty soon, no doubt. Uh, keeping an eye on that and monitoring that volcano pretty closely there on the big island. Um, all right, folks, as uh, far as Iceland uh, volcanoes go, nothing showing up on the e on the uh, USGS website. Uh, maybe perhaps on the EMSC website. We can check that out real quick, but nothing above 4.5 uh, for that threshold in the uh, USGS map. <coughs> and, uh, wow. Okay, that was a, yeah, that was, that was a pretty good-sized quake. Anyway, um, Iceland... Not a whole lot, folks. At least according on these guys too, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty quiet. Doesn't look like anything's being reported uh, there in the Iceland area. Gosh darn it! <laughs> these maps are just kind of uh, zig. Okay, anyway, it didn't show anything, folks. It looks pretty quiet there for now. Uh, I'm gonna jump off here, get a beautiful night's sleep, and you know, enjoy the evening and. Uh, definitely a, been a beautiful day. Uh, definitely some positive vibes going out. And uh, man, I tell you what, severe weather potential tomorrow, folks. Stay alert. I wanted to do an update on that. Didn't get a chance to. I may do that early in the morning. Already tornado warnings popping off in parts of Oklahoma. Severe thunderstorm warnings throughout the region there. And this will only intensify as we come into tomorrow. And that low pressure uh, pulls up a lot of gulf moisture and creates a headache for a lot of residents there throughout the south states so uh, uh just be weather aware if you're uh, if you live in that area all right guys have a great night a great beautiful night and we will chat at you guys a uh, little later peace out